Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're here at uh, SEIU headquarters up in Scranton. We're just celebrating because we're finishing up one of our waves and starting a new one. And this right here is Primo. Hey, Primo. How you doing? Hey, Primo. Why don't you take a walk with me? Let's go. Let's go talk to some people. Come on. Let's go along. So um, we're up here in the IBEW building, the um, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. It's a really cool building. Take a look at this. Have you really looked at this? It's really pretty amazing. We were up here looking at this. This is from um, 1901. And um, we were kind of looking at this. Lots of white men and lots of mustaches. <laughs> but um, there are occasionally, there are uh, women who are in the picture as well. And um, some color as well, which is nice to see. Um, but this is the, uh, here, let me just zoom in here. So you can see this. It's pretty cool. So um, we're here in downtown Scranton, and um, the architecture here is amazing, and we have been canvassing for weeks here, for weeks. And um, so we're stepping outside, kind of a balmy day. Look at some of this architecture that's here. Just amazing. Hey, let's go sit on the wall over there. I see a lot of people that do that. We won't get arrested or anything, will we? <laughs> so. Primo, where are you? Jaywalking. Yeah, jaywalking. <laughs> yeah, if I'm going to get arrested, I want to be arrested for something more meaningful than that. Primo, where do you live? I live in Exeter, Pennsylvania. Exeter. Oh, that's like one of the largest um, polling locations in, in all of uh, uh, Luzerne County, right? It should be, yes. Yeah, because it's isn't it three that are combined together? Yeah, it's uh, West Pittston, Pittston, and uh, Wyoming. Okay. So so they, usually, they usually combine them all together. Looks the like these are a little bit on the dry side, so we can do that. Okay, cool. So, um, I wanted to talk with you a little bit because there's a lot of people who um, have never done canvassing work before. There's a lot of union people out there that have never done canvassing work before. Have you ever done any before? No. This no. Is, so this, this is my first time doing it. Your first so. time doing it. Okay. So, um, hmm, maybe this is not a good idea. We're going to have to speak up a little bit, but... Um, so, uh, Primo, so you live in uh, Exeter? Exeter, Pennsylvania. Exeter, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And um, so, I would like to start with, you've been doing it for several weeks now. Yes. Okay. Since, uh, would, since the end of July. Since the end of July, right. So, um, what was something, what was something, I remember there was one weekend or one day that we actually went to Wilkes-Barre and you were actually knocking doors in your old neighborhood. Yeah, my old neighborhood. It was uh, my old neighborhood. I used to live on Luzerne Street in Wilkesbury. Okay. And uh, I wanted that neighborhood because I knew almost everybody in that general area. Right. And when I went knocking on doors and talking to people, it was it was they, they were like it relief on their faces. Oh, oh, you are you're the one that's knocking on doors. You're, <laughs> oh, it's the Hughes kid. We know you. The Hughes kid. Yeah, the Hughes kid. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was five of us, so we were. Okay. We weren't terrors in the neighborhood, but we were actually respectful people in the neighborhood. There you go. You know, we helped, we helped, we helped everybody. But anyway, but yeah, they they enjoyed they enjoyed seeing me, and I, I think I got a lot of cards that. Day. Well, you also had a lot of doors. I remember you saying something about since you kind of lived in that neighborhood, you knew all the shortcuts all, and all the shortcuts yeah. to get you know you go through this backyard. Yeah, or, I could okay. go through this. But as a matter of fact, a neighbor yelled at me as I was going through. I was like, she was like. Listen, what are, you, what are you going through my yard for? And then she goes, Oh, you're that Hughes kid. I you know used you. to do that years ago, right? <laughs> yeah, I said, Yeah, I used to do this like 20 years ago. And she was like, Yeah, I know. I remember you. Go ahead. Get out of here. <laughs> so what I really liked about that story is it really speaks to what SEIU is doing. Yeah. You know, the idea that we have members knocking in regions where they're from, yes. where they work, where they've lived, and that kind of thing. And that really, and so when I heard, when you said, hey, I, I know, I let you kind of look at the yeah. maps, and you're like, this is the one. Yeah. I was really excited about that because I think that that's really key because this canvas is different from a lot of other canvases that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, sometimes they seem to be almost literature drops where it's like you barely engage here's the information you got to get to the next door and of course we didn't we were nowhere like that on this campaign right, right? right. we were really emphasizing those conversations and having those conversations and engaging well, with people that's, that's what you really need is you really need the conversations to get people to realize that the primary elections are just just as important as regular presidential elections right 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 they, they need to they need to go out and vote people need to go out and vote 
people need to go out and vote. So, um, okay, so that was a good moment for you. Yeah. Now, you know, we've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah. Okay, I would like you to reflect and think about um, maybe like, what was the day that you thought, what did I get into? I shouldn't even be here. I mean, like, is, is it a full moon? Like, what, what, you know, like one of those bad days too, because that's going to happen, right? It, yeah, it's going to happen. It, it, you always have to take the good with the bad. Uh, one of the bad days was when, right when it was, uh, it was, the rain was just coming down really, really hard. And it was one of those days where there was flooding actually in the area. Oh, right, we right. Out that day. And, uh, <clears throat> and, but the next day you had us, you had, we had, we, we did phone banking because it was way too much. Right, money. it was too much. Yeah, right. we, I think there was three days we've missed total. One with a heat advisory right. and two with flooding. Right. Um, right. Like the one day with flooding, the, the heat wasn't, it wasn't a problem for me. Right. I'm, I'm used. I'm used to being out, on the, out like South Dakota, out in the plains. Heat is like no, no match. I just, I'm not. I'm okay with the heat. Right. But the rain, the torrential rain that was coming that's, down. I mean, I, I had an umbrella and I was still soaked. Yeah. And that's no when I was much. like, I don't know. I don't know. Why am I here? I, why am I doing this in this weather? And you have to realize that you have to do it because nobody else is going to do it. That's right, that's right. It'd be terrible to get to the end of the election and lose by just a few points, and you could right. be like, oh, there was a rainy day, right? right? It's too important. You know, yeah. And the big picture, obviously, is that we're fighting because unions are under attack, right. you know? I mean, and our members are under attack, our neighbors are under attack. When we think about working people, this is why we're out here and why we're doing this work. And and so it's, it's kind of, I think that that recharges the batteries a little bit, yes, you does. know, when those yeah. things happen like that. Even, get, even getting good content conversations in with people it recharges your battery because you're in there and you're you're talking you're you're knocking all these doors either nobody's home or it's it just turns into like one one problem after another but then you'll get that one conversation with that one person whether they're elderly or whether they're young and it, it just energizes you more to go and boot again cool so what i'm curious like i i don't know we didn't talk we've never talked about this but what what was it that made you decide that this is what you wanted to do when this opportunity came up, was there some catalyst there? Was it someone you knew? Was it was it um, was there something that that said, okay, Primo's going to stand up. He's going to knock on doors, right? Um, you're going to take that leave of absence. You're going to go out there and do this. Well, I I am a union member, and even though they they asked me, it wasn't them asking me per se. It was I need to go out and do something. You need to you need to be stand for something. Okay. It's just like Winston Churchill said, if you didn't, if you don't stand for something and make enemies, how, how are you even, you know, how are you even here? You know, right, you right. Need, you need to stand for something. If you don't, you don't you stand for nothing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and so we had uh, quite a team up here. Yes, we, we were doing a lot individually. We were doing in teams. We had a chance to kind of rotate around. Yeah. And that teamwork, I think, is really helpful, too. Yes, it is. Yes, to it is. Kind the, of, the teamwork teamwork is helpful because it, it, it covers a wide variety of areas we're covering a wide variety of areas and we're covering a lot of we're gonna have to pause a moment here i know i know <laughs> so let's uh kind of look around here so we're obviously right in downtown and the ambulance just turned we're um really close to um luzerne uh the um or i'm sorry yeah luzerne community college right and i think this is one of those buildings actually from the Times building down and the Scranton there. Times building down there. We kind of, I'll zoom in a little bit. It's kind of in the distance there by that tower there. And uh, yeah, there's some amazing, just some amazing buildings here. Um, but, get, but getting back to the, uh, the teamwork, you need to have the teamwork, in the, especially in this area. There's there's a lot of a lot of diversity in the area, and we, mm -hmm. you need you need a diversity out there. Right. Talking to people, not just not just one group of people you just need a whole group just out there doing what you need to be, that needs to be done for this so if you are um, if you were having a conversation with someone who's considering coming out like their their mind is not quite made up what kind of advice would you offer them or what would you ask them to think about well I, I think about I tell them to think about what made them come to vote in the first place what made they come and vote in the first place? Exactly. Okay. What made you come and vote for people in the first place? For vote for the person or the party in the first place? Okay. What makes you? What makes you vote? And then think about that, and then think about your issue. Okay. What issue you have? Right. And a lot of times people will just say, you know what, you're right. 
that that issue, say it's taxes or the economy or opioids, whatever. Right. They they right. then it they actually come out of their shell and say that is the reason why I vote now. And a lot of people need to be reminded on how to vote, hmm. how to vote, how they how they're. How to, how to vote party wise right right you know? so. well I mean we aren't just born knowing what the process right. is and, and how how that all works right so so I have something that's a little bit more personal now you know as, as we've worked for several weeks together we found out that we had some common interests which was music right yeah. and of course this is coming right at this time right <laughs> so um wow it's a busy day today there comes uh volunteer uh, maybe it's a Kate volunteer So um, you get to know people, right? You yeah. you have a whole nother group of friends, right? Yeah. I kind of feel like we're a little family in there, <laughs> yeah. uh, which, which is kind of funny because it's only been a few weeks. It's but only we've, been a few weeks. Yeah. We've developed those bonds, yeah. right? And so um, I found out that you play a musical instrument, and so do yeah. I. I also found out, I just found out recently that I'm 10% American Indian. Nice. Right? Nice. And, and why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? My background is uh, my half. My, my father was full blood, and my mother was uh, my mother was uh, Italian. Italian, okay. Uh, that's why I have darker skin than most people. Gotcha. But, uh, gotcha. Uh, my wife is Lakota, Native American, and she's she's a half blood. Oh wow! And uh, she came from South Dakota, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, as same as me. Wow. Which is yeah, and we never knew each other until like high school where we passed by each other and said hi to each other or whatnot, you know? But uh, after that, after high school, you know, I, I married and then I got to, I had married, had a couple kids and then I got divorced from my first wife. And I met her at a, at a bar in Wilkesbury. I met her and uh, we've been together for 17 years now, 18 years, 18 years, going on 18 years. Fantastic. Probably kill me because of that, but <laughs> 18, <laughs> 18 Oh, no one's going to see this. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's all going to be fine. But, uh, yeah, we been, we got together 18 years now, and uh, I've I've always played I played the native flute. Right. In the in the 80s, in the 1980s and 90s at the time, I couldn't come out and say I was native. I would be made fun of, ridiculed, and everything. I couldn't even play my own music in in my classes. Wow. Because it was outright frowned upon really right right you know so and that, that, that that's another reason why I, I had to stick by my convictions and come out that's you awesome know, it had to, it had to. so this morning I was thinking about oh my goodness I should have asked you to bring one of your flutes right because yeah. I had heard a recording of it of you playing yeah. and then I got here and I mentioned that to you and you were like hey I have one in my car yeah. like I always, fake. I always carry him with me uh, well you know I you know who does that right primo does well, well, Primo, you, Hughes, you, it's that Hughes boy that you're, does that you're, you're a musician yourself if you had a chance to carry an instrument with you and, right and, and the just recorder have that yeah five ten minutes to just say I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna play you, there you, it is you would do it you can go and do right. it so why don't you show us what you have there and right and, and let have, people know I have one of my native flutes okay it's uh two drones two drones and and a, and, and I know player. what that is. So what do you know what pitches they're droned on? They're all they're all uh, in an A. A. Oh, they're all in A. Oh, so you have a double A. Are they in octaves or they're, are, they're, the center one is a higher octave than the other two? Okay, I and got I you. And I can change the pitch of each one by, by putting Oh, that's what those straps are that's for. That's what the straps are for. Oh, cool. So they're like stops almost. Yes, they're like stops. This one's is just a solid Oh, look at drum. the heads on those. But the heads are eagle heads. Look at those eagle heads. Oh, that's way cool. This one, I mean, this seriously, side. and look at the front here. And those, do they snap together or? No, they're actually just melted they're, they're together. Made they're, made, they're made as one. They're made as one. One piece, wow. <clears throat> look at that. That's amazing. It's, like a, it's a gorgeous piece. I've always wanted Oh, it's the, the turquoise the in turquoise there. The turquoise in there, yeah. Right, and, and the, the design. The carving, the carvings, yeah. Yeah, so is this symbolic of anything? I, no. You know, uh, it reminds me a little bit of some of the work that the Hopi do with the ingrain, like this in is, silver where, and the grandma. This is where it came from. This is, a, this is, a Hopi is it really? Yes, it is. Oh my God! Okay, <laughs> you're, you're I'll right take Native money, Americans man. for two hundred, Jack. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Right I knew the, someone the Hopi, who was the, the, the curator. Hopi Navajo, Hopi Navajo made it for me. 
Yeah, I knew uh, uh, the curator of the Heard Museum for a yeah. while out yeah. in uh, out in Phoenix. So, all right. Wow, I guess that. How cool is that? <laughs> I said that looked hopey. That's amazing. I'll never. That'll never happen again. I take this moment to retire from all my knowledge of American Indians. Okay. Um, why don't you play a note? Why don't you? Uh, maybe you can play a little something. You hear the sound? It's going to be a very soft sound. Beautiful, beautiful, wow. That's amazing, just amazing. It How cool. Takes a lot of breath to use the three you know what? At the same time. I feel that you have just quieted Scranton. <laughs> Look at this, there's like not a sound in this moment, right? What did right. you do? That's amazing. Okay, we need to have more of that. That's just cool. so I don't make it rain. Yeah, don't make it rain. Are you kidding? You'll have a bunch of your teammates in there that will not be happy with you. Right. <laughs> so, Primo, any last words for um, now? We're hopeful that maybe in a few weeks you'll be back again. Yeah, I should be. A, I, I'm, I'm hoping I'll be back in a two or three weeks. So everyone, do you hear that? He's been there and now he's actually gonna come back. So <laughs> so that might tell you something yes, too. So, yes. well, Primo, I wanna shake your hand. It's been a pleasure. pleasure, pleasure. Yeah, a pleasure. And I'm pleasure looking forward to you coming back. I and, hope I uh, do, do come back. Yes, so I, hope I, I Hopefully everything will work out in your favor. I have a feeling that our paths are gonna cross again. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, great work for, for, uh, for Wolf, for SEIU, um, for Scranton, and, uh, and everywhere we've been here, yeah. um, right? Yeah. So, uh, okay, great. So that was Primo, and um, all right, catch you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>